morning. So it's kind of a nice day to be able to stay indoors, get onto Google Classroom. Hopefully you've all found your way through now. And um, find your lessons on Virtual Classroom. We had a lot of students and parents who picked up their devices yesterday. Hopefully you're able to find your way in there. If you did have any problems, get on um, yesterday. Just know that you can um, contact your teachers through their email. And if you still need to get a device, they will be open on Friday from 8 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, or 8 o'clock till 10, 8 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock in the morning to pick up a device. So let your teachers know if you still need one, if you have had any problems with that. So I'll give you another minute or so, and then I want to share a story with you today. helpers with me today. I have my granddaughter Charlie, which a lot of you know, and her brother Conrad, my other grandson, here they are, and they're going to help us with a little art project at the end. So if you need to get, if you have any crayons or if you've got any crayola markers or any watercolors, you might want to gather them together with a piece of paper and we'll do a little fun art project at the end of the, the story. As I was deciding which story to do today, I have a couple of favorite authors, and one of them was Tommy DePaola, because we've been reading 26 Fairmont Avenue in school, and how much we love him, and um, Stregan Known and all the great stories he does. Um, I was thinking, well, should I do him, or should I pick another favorite author, which is Patricia Polacco? And so I chose, since it's springtime, and I know we're getting a lot of April showers, or we're going to bring May flowers. I decided to pick one to go along with the springtime and Easter, and what I'm going to read to you today for Shanka's Eggs by Patricia Polacco. Many of you might remember that Patricia Polacco also wrote, wrote the story Thunder Cake, which many of you read in second grade. And in third grade, we read the story The Keeping Quilt. And so she does a lot of great folk tales and a lot of stories from her ancestry, which comes from the Ukraine. So I'm going to share this one with you today, and I hope you will enjoy it. This book is also a Reading Rainbow book, so if any of you can find any of the old Reading Rainbow um, videos with um, LeVar Burton, if you remember those, he actually does one on Roshanka's eggs, and it's really fun to watch Patricia Polacco actually design some of these eggs. So are we ready? Here we go. The Shanka's Eggs, written and illustrated by Patricia Polacco. Babushka lived alone in a dakcha, a little house in the country, but she was known far and wide for her fine eggs, and she lovingly painted. Her eggs were so beautiful that she always won first prize in the Easter festival in Moscow, which is Moscow. Each day, Babushka would take the shell of an egg from her basket and paint it in wonderful designs using the shapes of stars and flowers, triangles and circles. Through the long, cold winter, Babushka painted. Can you see those beautiful eggs? Now, look for a minute because I want you to look real close at those eggs. Because these eggs are actually called the Zonkey eggs. They come from the Ukraine and they're actually not painted but they're more of a batik, um, which is where they take um, dyes and wax, and where the wax is put, the dye doesn't stick. And so with these beautiful eggs, it's kind of like when you do your Easter eggs. You guys will get a little packet of dyes maybe that come um, in your Easter egg, dye, egg dyeing kit. And inside there, but with the little tablets, you also find, can you show me the little the white crayon? Do you have that one there? 
It usually comes with a white crayon like this as well. And wherever you press with this wax, after you put it in the dyes, what's yellow or blue or whatever color you decide, it won't stick to where the, the crayon is. And you get these beautiful designs. And that's what they do with these. And then after they dye it in yellow first, they'll take it out and they'll do some more designs on it with the wax. And then they'll dye it in perhaps the red and then blue and whatever. And by the end, the last color they use is black. Then they hold those eggs over a candle and the wax comes off and they have these beautiful designs that are left behind, which you could see. So we're going to do a little something like that later. So those are called Pizanki eggs. They come from the Ukraine. Then one day after a snowstorm, Bushuka, um, Babushka went outside. She could hear the faint sound of falling snow. It was a sound like soft rain. Herds of caribou came to feed at Babushka's because the grass they usually ate were covered with snow. Boys and girls, do you know what caribou are? Have you ever seen caribou? Well, caribou is just another name for a reindeer, except reindeer are domesticated and the caribou are wild. And see how they came right up to her home there to see what she was doing. So they're caribou or wild reindeer. Just then a flock of noisy geese honked loudly overhead. As they glided over the snow, one of them faltered and fell from the sky. Babushka went to where the goose lay crumpled in the snow. A hunter did this, Babushka grumbled. She carefully picked up the goose and took it back to her little house. How do you think Babushka must have felt? I think she'd be very sad. There she fed the little goose from her own table and put the goose in her best basket lined with the warmest quilt from her own bed. I shall name you a good name, one that we both can like, eh, my little friend? She said as she patted the goose's head. How do you like Roshenka? Yes, then Roshenka it shall be. Now, boys and girls, Roshenka in Russian is actually means little river. With Babushka's care, Roshenka grew stronger each day as each day passed. To repay her kindness, Roshenka laid an egg for breakfast every morning. Now, as I read this story, you're going to learn this book is kind of like the goose that laid the golden egg. So think about that as I read on. As Roshenka got better, she walled around the little house, exploring every nook, cupboard, and corner. One day, she jumped. She jumped. <laughs> on top of Babushka's work table, overturning the jars of brightly colored paint that she used to color the eggs. Yet, Babushka screamed as she chased the goose from the broom. No! The frightened goose flapped her wings to get away and knocked over the basket of eggs that Babushka had so lovingly painted. The eggs crashed onto the floor and shattered into a million pieces. They were both very sad. There was no reason now for Babushka to go to the festival. Oh, can you imagine how sad she must be? She worked so hard on those beautiful eggs and to have them all broken into a million pieces. What is she going to do? I'm sure she's so unhappy about this. The next morning, Babushka slowly got out of bed and trundled over to Roshenka's basket. Ever seen a miracle, Babushka whispered. A miracle. More beautiful than any egg she even made. Can you see the egg up close there? The goose is laying her beautiful colored eggs. She made small, a small holes on both ends of the egg and blew the yolk and white into a dish to, to cook and eat later for breakfast. 
Then she held the egg up to the morning light and marveled at its beauty. After that, every morning for twelve mornings, there was another egg, each more beautiful than the one that had laid the day before. Moskova. How wonderful, she thought. She has enough eggs now to take the festival in Moskva. A miracle has replaced the eggs that were broken. Look at all those beautiful eggs. Put this on here, right? Going all over the place. There we go. All these beautiful eggs that Babushka made. I'll bet you guys can make some beautiful eggs like that, too. Spring is here, my little friend, Babushka said to Roshenka the morning of the festival. Soon now you'll be flying off to the north with your flock. She bustled to the hearth fire and brewed some of her most favored tea. The two shared a saucer of tea with Kalich, a sweet Easter bread. She covered each piece with Pashka, a spread of cheese, butter, and raisins. They savored each bit together. One for you, one for me, Babushka shouted. Da da, my little friend, I shall sorely miss you, but you are a wild thing, and a miracle sent you to me. It would not be right to ask you to stay here with me forever. When Babushka left her little house, she took one last look at Roshenka sitting on the doorstep. She waved and then took determined steps from Moskva with a basket of her precious eggs. And here she is talking to her beloved, her beloved. Her beloved goose. My grandchildren are busy doing some artwork for you. She crossed the Libotov Valley where the caribou mothers were walking their newborn calves. A miracle, she thought. New little lives, a miracle. She crossed the bridge over to Moskva River and soon she could see the onion domes of old Moscow. She's on her way. Probably a long way from her home. Take all those beautiful eggs. The festival was bright and exciting. There were goat carts selling kulish, possessions, dancers, jugglers, and laughing children playing and running. Babushka showed her old friends the eggs. Her eggs are the most beautiful in all of Russia, they thought. Look how beautiful this is. I love her illustrations on this. Hmm. I wonder what Babushka's thinking. Do you think she'll sell all of her eggs? Hmm. Look at them, the elder said. They almost glow, as if the paint is part of the shell itself. The judges picked Babushka's eggs, the most beautiful. Babushka was so happy. She beamed as she looked at the first prize, a feather bed quilt. And we know how much Patricia Polacco loves her family quilts, doesn't she? As Babushka made her way homeward, a honking flock of geese flew overhead. Babushka gave them a long, lingering look. She wondered if Roshenka was one of them. What do you think? Do you think Roshenka was one of those geese that were leaving and heading to another part of the land? Hmm. That would be really sad when, they, when she leaves, isn't it? But she knows that she needs to leave and follow her, her flock. When Babushka arrived at her home that evening, Roshenka was gone. Alone, she put the new quilt on her little bed. She brewed a cup of tea, ate the last of the Coolidge and Pashka, got into bed favorite books of poems, and drifted off to sleep. She hadn't noticed Roshenka's basket. Oh, do you notice anything in Roshenka's basket there? Look closely. Hmm, what did she leave her? But that night, oops, let me show you that past page. When Babushka arrived home, let's see, we got that one. Okay, the basket. But that night, Babushka was awakened from a sound sleep by even 
an ever so small sound. It was coming from Rashenka's basket. She hobbled closer and saw a glorious egg. But this one was different from all the others. It quivered and moved. It made tiny muffled sounds. The egg jumped, bumped, rolled and pitched in the basket. Oh, what do you think is in there? What do you think it is? Let's peek. What do you see in that egg? Is this just any egg? Oh, it looks like something's gonna hatch out of that egg. Hmm. Do you think she's left her a special prize egg? Maybe a baby gosling's coming out? Then there was a crack, and Babushka could see the very special gift that Rashenka had left for her. Oh, a miracle, Babushka said. And this little goose remained with Babushka always. Look how adorable that little goose is. Let me get in there. Here it is. Boys and girls, why do you think this goose stayed with Rashenka, or stayed with uh, Babushka, and never left her while Rashenka left. Why do you think this one stayed forever? Think about that. Maybe we'll talk about that at the end. Okay, well, I want to show you some of my beautiful eggs. These are beautiful eggs that came from my chickens. We have all different kinds of egg chickens, about five different types, and they're just starting to lay again. And we have some that do the white eggs, which are nice for coloring or dyeing. And then we have some that don't even need dyeing. I've got green and chocolate brown. And our hand that does the tan ones are just starting to lay. It's kind of a tannish golden color. And some are a little bluer than others. Some are more green. So we just love having these eggs. And you know, all winter long, they don't lay many eggs. They're what we call molting. And the feathers are coming, kind of coming loose on them. But then comes springtime, all these beautiful eggs start coming in. Every day we gather some out of our, our um, chicken cage, chicken coop. So those are always so fun to do. Well, I told you we're going to do a little art project today. One thing I've done with my children in the past is you can take a little plastic egg like this and put little bits of um, tissue paper on them and some white glue and a little glitter and you get some beautiful colored eggs you can make like this. Today I thought I would share with you one that I did several years back with my students. And we made these little baskets. I think we were like in second grade and we did this. And inside our baskets, we filled them with eggs. And these are crayon resist eggs. And if you have any of those special crayons that have some glitter in them, they make them especially sparkly. I don't know if you can see the sparkle in this or not, but here are some of these that we did before. This one, you can kind of see the sparkle lights on them. And the white, as I mentioned earlier, the white is especially fun to do use because you can't see it when you put it on, but then when you put your paint on it, it comes to life, doesn't it? So my granddaughter, my grandson, Charlie and Conrad are here to kind of show you what they're doing. We started with a pattern with some eggs. We put on here, drew a pattern of an egg, and then you took whatever color crayons you liked and you drew on those. And I think Charlie's made a few here and Conrad's still coloring. She's going to show you. Maybe you can get your paintbrush ready there, Charlie. You can show us what you're doing on yours. So let's see if we can just turn it this way a little bit. Let's see here. How's that? Good. Okay. So basically, I'm just tracing these little things. So I put them on my paper and then trace them. So then I'm coloring my eggs, and as you can see on this one, it doesn't have much because I added white in it, in it, in it. There is some really cool designs, so I'm going to put some red paint on that one. And then I'm going to see what happens. Maybe put your hand down here a little bit so they can see. There we go. And then you can just wipe over it. And then I, I wrote something that it says. Okay. Need a little more water. Right. You gotta make sure that when you put the crayon on these, you put it nice and dark on there so that it really does good job of um, resisting the paint. I had a little bit 
too much water. That's okay. You just wash it away. And the fun thing is on here, you could take these and you can go outside the lines. It's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can cut these out and then all that part that goes outside the lines is cut off anyway. So mine says... Oh, you want to hold it up so they can see it? Yeah, hold on. Let me just finish painting. It says crack. I couldn't really write it that well because it was in white, so I couldn't see. Yeah, so white is kind of fun, isn't it? You just kind of kind of yeah. a little surprise there. You gotta do the best you can. Yeah. Good job, Charlie. And how are you doing over there, Conrad? You're getting ready to paint yours. Char, how about getting one of some of the washable markers over there? And you can show them what you can do with washable markers if you don't have paints. Can we do some? You want to go over one of one of yours, Charlie? That they can see close up. Ooh. So I just go over it? Mm -hmm. Pick one. Let's go. Maybe go this one. Or yeah. Whatever we want. I'm going to go this one. Maybe use the side of it. In my class, I know you've done some ghost writing um, with white crayon, and you, those are always fun with our spelling words and our word work. And this I is kind of the same like kind of thing. Writing. Done. You're done? You can use some of the markers over there, and you can color over it. Oh. Or you can paint. Can you just hold it up just so we can see it a little bit there, Charlie? So it comes out like this. And you can kind of see the crayon. So again, the darker you write with your crayon, the better it's going to um, show through the paint or the markers. So I know you've got all your fun things, your activities you're doing on, um, on your virtual classroom with your mathematics and your reading and your writing. So now here's a fun little Easter art project you can do at home. Something simple that you can do with your, with your family. And I, one more time, I want to remind you all again that if you weren't able to get your devices um, on Monday, yesterday, then remember there'll be another time to go on Friday coming up at, from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock in the morning to pick up your devices. And um, if you have any questions, make sure you contact your teachers. Uh, remember again that your Google Classroom is not for chatting with your friends. Ask important questions to your teachers there and they will be getting back with you um, throughout the day. So have a wonderful day. Hope you have, have a happy Easter with your family this week um, and this weekend. Enjoy your time together. We miss you. We look forward to chatting with you online about your important um, academics that we're doing and um, we hope that all is well with your families and you're all staying healthy and well. Thank you.